Did you witness the aurora? Over the past week, the heavens have graced us with this spectacular show, visible all the way down in Kitt Peak, Arizona. London was absolutely dreamy. Joke, that's just AI. But whilst most of the world was distracted by the pretty lights, the space industry was occupied by more serious issues, the potential damages such aurora could bring. Hey Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Liu and in this week's video I want to talk about the aurora implications on spacecraft. So let's begin. Yeah! Aurora, also known as the Northern and Southern Lights, are a natural display generally seen in the polar regions. It's caused by when charged particles from the sun, known as solar wind, interacts with the Earth's magnetic field. And this gets focused along the magnetic field lines to the poles, which is where they'll collide with gas molecules in the atmosphere, exciting them to higher energies. When the energy is released, we get this beautiful emission of colourful light and the colour would depend on the gas molecule that's involved, be it oxygen or nitrogen. I made a video about this a while ago, so please check it out if you haven't already. But this video is about the threat associated with aurora and not why they're so pretty. Aurora will be strongest when solar activity is strongest, i.e. especially during solar storms. If you have a massive solar flare and coronal mass ejection, or CME for short, on the sun, then you know that you're gonna have a light display. So predicting auroras should be easy, right? Just monitor the solar activity. Well, actually, it's quite hard. Factors like the speed and the direction of the solar wind, the orientation of our planetary magnetic field, and the Earth's own magnetosphere play crucial roles in determining when and where auroras will be visible. Observations from spacecraft monitoring the solar wind and interplanetary magnetic field can provide alerts about incoming solar flares and CMEs that may trigger auroras and this can be used to forecast auroras with a lead time of several hours to a day or two. Monitoring active regions on the sun's surface and, and studying their potential for producing disturbances such as rapid changes to sunspots or magnetic fields in active regions. Forecasters will be able to anticipate auroral activity a few days in advance. But beyond this range, it's pretty much uncertain. The precise prediction and preparation is key. On March the 13th, 1989, a powerful geomagnetic storm knocked out the power grid in Quebec, Canada, leading to a widespread blackout that affected millions of people and it gave a huge hit on the Canadian economy. The storm induced strong electrical currents in the power lines which overloaded and tripped circuit breakers, causing the collapse of the entire power grid. But don't think that only the poles are affected. Last weekend's storms may have caused internet outages seen in South Africa. And this wouldn't be the first time either. Last week's storm was rated a G5 level, and the last G5 geomagnetic storm in 2003 damaged South Africa's transformers, but also caused power outages in Sweden. On a scale of G1 to G5, G5 is the most intense. It's so severe that the US government had to come out and issue a warning about the risks to power grids, highlighting the possible widespread voltage issues and tripping of power. Ideally, in such situations, you should be preparing yourself for extended power outages, like maintaining backup power sources and disconnecting any sensitive electronics that you have to guard against power surges, and not be like me prancing around taking selfies. Do as I say, not as I do. Charged particles from auroras can interfere with electronics on both Earth and in space. Auroras can heat and expand the upper atmosphere. This expansion pushes denser air layers upwards, where the denser atmosphere creates more drag on satellites, slowing them down and causing their orbits to decay faster. This can lead to the need for more frequent maneuvers to maintain their altitudes. Lower altitude satellites will experience a stronger drag increase during storms. Geomagnetic storms can also alter the Earth's magnetic field, which can exert forces on satellites and make them deviate from their orbital paths. 
In some cases, these perturbations could lead to collisions between satellites or with space debris. Even Elon was worried. He commented that his satellites were under a lot of pressure. Making satellites with streamlined shapes from low friction materials can help, but it's tough. Now lastly, solar storms can disrupt essential technologies in communications. The ionized atmosphere that gives you the aurora displays would disrupt the normal propagation of radio waves used in various communication systems. And also GPS signals rely on precise travel times through the ionosphere. Any disturbances will cause the delays in these signal travel times and consequently errors in GPS positioning and navigation. And then besides all that, you can also expect problems with internet, TV, and phone services. Anyway, that's all I have time for. So did you see the Aurora? Whilst you were busy enjoying the show, the space scientists were on it, protecting you from power outages, trying to keep their satellites afloat, and dodging collisions, and then making sure all your essentials like TV and internet still work. Thank you to my YouTube Perks members for supporting. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave me a like, share, and subscribe. Hey, space.